Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Tech Showdown. My name is Kevin, this is my co-host Teddy, and today we're doing something I've never done before, or at least on this scale. It is a 17 CPU showdown. That's right, 17 CPUs. So this one I think will be very, very interesting to see the performance of all of these CPUs together. I would still recommend you guys go over and watch the individual showdown videos as I go into much more detail in those videos. They also have more benchmarks and they're just much more detailed in general. So if you want more information uh, on a certain CPU from this video, uh, just search my channel and you'll be able to find the individual showdown for that CPU. But first we have to talk about today's sponsor and it is champershampers.co.nz. So this is a fantastic website. If you want to find something for a friend you have in New Zealand, maybe you live in New Zealand, maybe you don't live in New Zealand, but you have friends or family here. If you're like me and you've struggled, you know, <laughs> coming up with gift ideas for people or things like that, uh, you just head over there. It's very, very easy, very nice uh, sort of gourmet hampers and things like that. And it'll make it very easy for you, especially with Christmas being not that far away now. So let's first start with the CPU roll call then. And we'll go through the list. We'll start with AMD first. So at the bottom there, we have the Ryzen 3 1200. That is a four core, four thread CPU. Then we have the Ryzen 3 1300X. That is also a four core, four thread CPU, but a higher clock speeds than the 1200. Then we move up to the Ryzen 5 1400. That is a quad core, eight thread CPU. Then we have its big brother, the Ryzen 5 1500X. That is a uh, also a quad core, eight thread CPU. Again, just with the higher clock speeds. Then we take another jump up with the Ryzen 5 1600. That is a six core, 12 thread CPU. And it's big brother, the 1600X, which once again, six cores, 12 threads, but has the higher clock speeds. And then we go to the Ryzen 7 1700, which is the eight core, 16 thread CPU. Now I haven't included the 1700X or the 1800X in this because the results I have for those were from quite a while ago and I haven't had the chance to retest those CPUs so I didn't really want to include them in the video. Then we jump up to the Threadrippers. So you have the 1920X, now that is a big boy of a CPU, that is a 12 core, 24 thread CPU, very powerful. And then the big boy, the 1950X, that is my personal CPU now and that is a 16 core, 32 thread CPU. Now let's go over to Intel then. And down the bottom there we have the Intel i3-7350K. That's a little uh, dual core, it's, it's, it does a good job. I mean it's multi-thread as well so it has four threads and that's pretty decent. Then we jump up to the i5-7400, that is a four core, four thread CPU. Then we have the i5-7600K, that is also a four core, four thread CPU. However it is unlocked and it does come with higher clock speeds. Then we go to the i7s. The 7700K, that is a four core, eight thread CPU, but it is locked. Then we have its unlocked counterpart, the i7 7700K. Once again, four cores, eight threads, higher clock speeds, and it is unlocked. Then we start getting into the Skylake X territory. So we have the i7 7800X, that is a six core, 12 thread CPU. Its big brother, the 7820X, that is an eight core, 16 thread Skylake X CPU and then the big boy of the Intel family for right now It's going to change soon, but that is the i9 7900X. That is a 10 core 20 thread CPU So of course I tested all these CPUs at their stock frequencies the platforms were obviously different I kept the memory the same for the most part. It was either at 2800 megahertz 2933 or 3000 I know there's a little bit of variance there, but it shouldn't matter too much but of course these were running different platforms. Some of them, I mean, there are four different platforms here. So some of them are dual channel, some of them are quad channel, but I tried to keep it as close as I can where possible. And we also tested them uh, overclocked as well, which was quite interesting. So as far as the overclocks go, I'll show you them now. So you can see the Ryzen CPUs for the most part, you know, hang around like the 3.9 gigahertz. You get four gigahertz out of them if you get a good one. The 1400 there wasn't the best coming at 3.8. I think I lost the Silicon Valley on that one. And as far as the Intel CPUs go, you see generally much, much higher clock speeds there, even for the Skylake X parts. I mean, the 7820X, I think I lost the Silicon Valley on that, uh, Silicon Valley, the Silicon Lottery on that one as well. But for the most part, the Intel CPUs have much higher clock speeds than the Ryzen CPUs. 
So with all that being said, let's jump to the benchmarks. And the first one I'm going to show you is a Cinebench test, uh, the single thread test. So we see in the single thread stock results, the Intel CPUs are much, much higher. This is to be expected because this is where Intel has uh, put a lot of their eggs, I suppose you might say. They're quite, you know, obviously on average they have less cores than their Ryzen counterparts, but instead they have these very high clock speeds. And so that's what gives them the very good single thread results. Uh, when we go to the overclock settings now, you see the Ryzen CPU still do, you know, they do a bit better, but there's still a huge gap between the two of them uh, as the, you know, Intel CPUs overclock much, much higher. They're very high clock speeds. I mean, you look at the 7700K there at 4.9 gigahertz. I mean, that is definitely not mucking around. Then when we move to the Cine, uh, Cinebench multi-thread test, this is where AMD comes into it much, much better and the Ryzen CPUs really start to shine. So you see on average there, even at the stock settings, the Ryzen CPUs are doing much better here. Uh, the Threadrippers are just absolutely crazy, putting up huge numbers at their stock frequencies. Uh, but you know, even the Ryzen 7 does a very, very good job. The 1700 there compared to even some of the Skylake X CPUs like the 7800X. Once we overclock, the Intel CPUs do a bit better because their legs are a little bit longer in terms of overclocking. We see the 7900X there coming up quite a bit more, uh, but the Ryzen CPUs still come up a bit too. Yeah, this is the thing here, that the, the Ryzen CPUs are much better in the multi-threaded applications because for the most part they just have more cores for you know similar price points as the Intel CPUs. So, Quite interesting with those two. Um, uh, it really shows the Threadripper's power though once they're overclocked. Over 3,300 for the 1950X. Next up is a more real world one and that's Handbrake doing a 10, uh, 1080p video, a 13 minute 1080p video uh, encoding it. So you, this gives you an idea of the render times. Obviously lower is better. So at the stock frequencies we see that the Ryzen CPUs generally do quite a bit better for the most part anyway. We see the 1600 and the 1700 coming in with very solid results there and the Threadrippers obviously do extremely well too. The high-end Intel chips, the 7820X and the 7900X still do a very good job but for the most part this is a very good area for Ryzen. Also when we go to the overclock results that's where it starts getting very interesting because of the high overclockability of the Intel CPUs. The 7900X coming very very close to the 1950X and beating the 1920X even though it has fewer cores and fewer threads. And the most interesting of all I think is a 7820X being exactly the same as the 1920X Threadripper. As far as the other CPUs go, the 1700 still puts on a good show there, actually beating the 7800X even though it's cheaper. Uh, so that's a good showing. But yeah, in Handbrake in general, this is a good one to show sort of what would be best for many people out there who are doing a lot of video rendering like myself and plenty of other, you know, YouTubers and other people in different industries. And the last one I wanted to show was the 3D Mark physics test. And this will show you how the CPUs handle, you know, physics stuff within games. So once again, the Ryzen CPUs do a very good job of this, although the Intel CPUs also do a pretty good job the 7820X, uh, you know, handily beating the uh, 1700, and so the 7800X uh, was very similar. The Threadrippers still reign king, though. They still do a very, very good job. Once we switch to the overclocked results here, you see that the, the gap starts to close once again. The 7900X does a very, very good job there at the top but the 1950X still wins, it, you know, it still beat the 1920X, so that's really solid. But yeah, for the most part, this is a big win, once again, for the Threadripper uh, CPUs, but they just have very, very, you know, these are just very, very powerful. And that's, th the rest of these, uh, the rest of the benchmarks I did, some of them use different GPUs, so I can't really use them, it wouldn't really be fair, but this is how I wanted to do it anyway. This gives you a very good idea, even though these were all synthetics, of the sort of like pure CPU horsepower of all these different CPUs. It shows you what they really can do once they're fully utilized in terms of all the cores and that. So that's why I wanted to do it. And what do we take from it? Well basically the Ryzen CPUs have a lot of that raw horsepower there. And many of them are extremely good value for money for how much power the CPU has. 
the Ryzen 5 1600 and the 1700 are both very, very powerful CPUs for the price points they're coming in at. However, the Intel CPUs are still very, very powerful. Uh, I see a lot of people bashing the 7820X and the 7900X, and there's legitimate reasons, as I highlighted in my showdowns, why those CPUs have problems. But one thing is true. They are very, very powerful CPUs. You cannot take that away from them. They are very, very powerful, especially the 7900X. That is a very powerful CPU. So yeah, I think this was quite good, uh, quite interesting for you guys. Let me know in the comment section down below what CPU you have. That's a question I've been wanting to ask you guys for a while. So what CPU are you running in your system right now? And maybe if you've got an older one, which CPU would you think about upgrading to? Um, maybe this video helped you decide a bit more on which CPU you might be looking to go for. Let me know in the comment section down below. I'd really like to know. I thank you guys for watching this video. Please subscribe to Tech Showdown if you haven't already and like the video because it shows your support for me and it gives me the motivation to keep making these videos, maybe make more big ones like this again in the future. I thank you all for watching and I'll see you guys next time.